here I'm going to do using these new random creation charts. I'm going to create whatever I happen to roll up. In this case, it's my World Tree Ranger subclass from my Great Tree book, and I got Dragonborn. So let's roll for a subtype. Well, I got the Rainbow Chaos. I need to do a male one this time because I'd already done a female example. I'm also in the future going to have to do one that's wearing very little clothing to show the belly patterning. In this case, I went through a lot of trouble to design it and to get the armor on it, but I didn't record that because I knew the process would be far too long. I did a lot of extra research on armor, rangers, figured out the exact pose I wanted, and used large sized pieces of paper in order to trace things out. I traced things out onto the final paper, and I made sure to get all the line art really clean. I also made it not too dark because I knew I was going to gouache over everything. As you can see, I'm putting a catch under paper under my hand to try to not get my skin oils or any dirt on the page to prevent smudging and to prevent any dirty or messing up with what I'm painting. I'm working methodically and really picking and planning out which colors I'm using here. As I go along, I figure out more and more about how exactly I'm doing the coloring. I decided it's more important to focus on the fact that this is an adventurer who fits the class they're representing more than focusing on representing its species or race type. Although I still wanted everything to be very accurate and work out rather well. I'm also using a paper I keep avoiding. As I need to start forcing myself to use my more expensive paper I've invested in, I used one of my better papers here. This is Fabriano Hot Press 25% cotton paper and I really like it. In some ways it's incredibly smooth and awesome to work on. But weirdly, I found the gouache looked a little different on it. In some ways, I think it looks a little worse, but it doesn't look worse in a way that's not correctable. I found that I actually had to put additional layers on for certain colors. I'm not sure if it's because the colors I mixed up were by nature a little streaky, or if I simply needed to put another layer because of the paper type. Because I don't seem to be having this issue on any other of the cheaper papers I've been working on, I think it might have something to do with the paper. I can't be entirely certain, because the trouble seemed to happen mostly with the dark turquoise color I'm going to be using later. I'm making sure to use a lot of the different colors I've mixed up. Off screen I have reference I already printed out of the previous artworks I made of the Rainbow Chaos Dragonborn and the Rainbow Chaos Dragon, which I've already done digitally. I printed out a lot of reference for the Great Tree book that will be helpful in the future, because I have the original digital art on the iPad that I'm literally using sitting on a stack of books to record this video. I also do find it a little difficult to see reference on my laptop computer screen as compared to looking at reference on the iPad or printed out. So in this case, I went through extra trouble to design and get everything worked out as perfectly as possible. I don't want to spend too much time on some of the pieces, but as these are artworks that are going to be intended to be published in a book, Sometimes it really pays off to go through the extra mile and the extra trouble. I took some breaks while working on this to really think about the exact color tones I was going to use to color in different parts of it. In general, I knew I wanted the armor to be very dark brown, black brown, and black overall. As I continue painting, I decide that I need to turn the page. I'm going to rotate the page here because it's much easier on my wrist to work at an angle that's beneficial to my wrist. I advise you consider rotating the page for the benefit of the way that your own wrist and arm can move whenever it's necessary for something like precise line or just based on the direction something's facing that you're painting. There are times in the process when moving the paper is more beneficial than being stubborn and leaving it in the original position. I made sure not to speed up the footage too much for the area where I turned the page because that would be upsetting to the eye of the viewer. However, overall this footage is extremely sped up. In fact, I had to save the original file so I could speed it up because 6x speed is the maximum in my Luma Fusion app. A lot of the paint I had already previously mixed was quite useful for painting this because I've been mixing up so many different pre-mixed colors. I've been really enjoying filling an empty half in full pans with watercolor and gouache some of which are straight from tubes or tubs when it comes to Himimiya gouache, and mixing up plenty of custom-made colors. It's been making painting faster and easier. 
Although recently I timed it, it takes eight minutes now to pre-wet everything, which is actually quite a bit of time, and to lay everything out ready to paint. However, I find that it's more enjoyable to pre-wet the paints that I'd pre-mixed and have a lot of different close to the colors I want or the exact colors I want over mixing the colors fresh every single time I'm painting. I'm finding myself painting more and faster and I do advise people consider this approach if they're finding that they're not enjoying mixing the paint up every single time. Here I'm putting that dark turquoise tone I was talking about earlier. This is the one I feel doesn't look as good on this paper for whatever reason. Overall, I find that I ended up layering on top of some of the colors on this type of paper because I felt like it needed another layer, which you have to be gentle with because the layer underneath, when it comes to real gouache like this, will reactivate. Acryl gouache is really a matte acrylic paint or a gouache with a little bit of acrylic polymer in it and will not reactivate. I'm not interested in using acryl gouache as much because I do not like wasting paint. For me, pre-mixing stuff ahead of time and knowing I can reactivate it forever is extremely useful. If you have a brand or type of gouache that hardens very, making it very difficult to re-wet and get the full creamy consistency, like Holbein gouache despite how high quality it is, I advise you add either a touch of honey or a touch of vegetable glycerin which will help it re-wet very easily. Too much though and you'll add shininess to the paint. I've been learning this through a little bit of trial and error, but adding honey really has very much helped me with the rewettability. I don't need to do this for the Himi Mia gouache however because I find it has become my favorite paint overall. It works really well for the way I like to paint. The biggest downside with the Himi Mia gouache to me is the fact that it can mold so I've been spraying isopropyl in it, isopropyl alcohol, and mixing it in and I have to keep up with that to make sure it doesn't mold. An additional issue with the Himi Mia gouache is that the black is shiny. The other color that's shiny is Prussian blue. But Prussian blue is quite shiny, but the black is extremely shiny. I don't know why these are the only two colors that are formulated to be shiny instead of matte. All the other colors are very matte and very pleasing. I ended up using the black Himi gouache here, although I kind of wish I used my mix that's based more with the Holbein gouache and some of the other blacks I mixed up that are more matte. However, I find that at certain angles this picture looks really good. The shine isn't bothersome and at other angles it is troublingly shiny. I end up coming back into this painting later with some new gouache colors I got because my Himi Mia 56 set came in. I only end up opening the new tubs in the set that aren't ones that I've already opened. Here you can see I edited some of the process here because I believe the entire thing was getting a little too long. Recently I also mixed up several new very dark greys and very dark browns, so different uh, exact shades of black brown. I'm using the variety of black browns here to work on these areas of the armor, which will, once the black is up, be in slight contrast with the black. However, it's a very dark black brown. In some of the spots I'm adding highlights, and in other spots I'm adding the base color. Sometimes if you use a gentle brush, to add a highlight while the paint is still wet, it'll blend into it a little or a lot depending on how soft the brush is. You can also use a soft makeup brush to gently drag over while it's wet to blend the colors very well together. If you want more of a harsh line, let the colors dry. It doesn't even take very long and then put the color on top next to it. I made sure to work out what I was going to do before I did it on the final painting. I also had a tester page off screen that I was checking colors on that was the same type of paper as this that I saved from the past. I labeled the paper so that I would know what type of paper it was to use in the future. I pulled it out to use here. I'm making sure to keep the lighting consistent, although in general, it's a nice look. I do wish that the black was matte instead of glossy. This will be featured in an upcoming book I'm working on. I'm still deciding the final name, but the project is called The Great Tree Book. It's a 5e compatible book that'll be useful for people to pick up and use. This is an artwork that's intended for that book, and it's for the subclass, like I said at the beginning of the video, The Great Tree Ranger. I'm just working out some of the final details here. I'm using a ruler to carefully paint on the lines. A single mistake here and maybe the whole picture is ruined so I made sure to be very careful. I used a see-through ruler so I could see what I was doing. Once again that's all for this video. 
If you like my videos, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to all notifications so you will know when a new video comes up. I aim for new videos every Wednesday, but sometimes life happens and things are delayed. I hope that you enjoyed this video and we'll see you with another one very soon.